Yo, what is up, everybody? My name is Alex. Welcome back to another video. Today, Riley and I are playing uh, part two of our D&D &D campaign. So a brief uh, breakdown of what happened in the first episode is we met uh, Riley's character, a Dragonborn Warlock, on an airship. He was woken up by a bit of commotion on the deck. After exiting his room with all of his gear, he came face to face with two guards. After taking them out, he had to deal with a bunch more. Uh, he single-handedly took out all of the attackers, but he wasn't able to save the crew. He is now on his way down towards the nearest town, and that's where we're starting. Riley, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. So. On, while we're in the air, can I? Can you? What? Riley. <laughs> um, I, I was wondering if I could take one of my torches, axe paper, or Casper station on it, and like burn the helmet, like mess, like burn the metal and everything, like change color. Uh, you want to change the color of the helmet? Uh, yeah, you can do that. So I'm just going to take a torch, Casper station, start fire on the torch. Then use it to like burn the metal. All right, uh, you grab a few lit torches from the basement. Go over towards. No, I have a torch. Well, you need more. Well, you, you take yeah, a torch good. off towards the corner of the ship. You put it down and cast your spell. Uh, roll the d twenty for effectiveness. Yeah, one second. Uh, What's your roll? Um, 18 plus 2. And I have a 20. So that is a 20. Uh, the, the fire on the torch spews outwards, uh, not catching fire to the ship, thank god. You, put, you place the helmet over top of the flame and the metal melts and molds. The gold is now hidden inside to still provide extra protection, but the helmet is now bright silver. Yeah. Alright, uh, the two NPCs who were flying the ship down, uh, call out saying, we're going to be landing in two minutes, prepare. Okay. So, I'll make sure I have all my stuff, and then when we land, I'll get off. Alright, the ship lands in, in, in the water uh, of the dock town called Neokori. Okay. Uh, after taking a brief look around, you see that there are a lot of taverns and not a lot of people currently outside. You decide to explore the town and you find three people standing outside wearing full battle gear, looking off towards the distance. Okay. Uh, you hear them talking and you decide, uh, you can decide to approach them or walk away. What do you do? Uh, I'll go talk to them. All right, you walk up. You walk up behind the three guards and ask what they're doing. One of them turns around and lets you know that they're watching for an orc raid party. They notice the sigil on your helmet and ask if you're from the Western Temple, to which you deny. Yeah. Off in the distance, you hear a bit of ruckus and you see a really, really beefed up orc, probably about thirty feet tall, walking towards you. He is alone. There is no one else nearby. One of the, the two of the guards ready up, and the other one takes two steps back into you. What do you do? Um, I ask if I can help if they need any. You offer your help to the guards, and they deny, telling you to go back to your home and wait. I told them I literally just got here off of the ship after taking out eleven guys, and I took this home with one. After telling them their story on the airship, they decided to let you help out. The two guards split off, heading towards opposite sides of the orc trying to attack. Uh, you have first turn. What is your attack? Okay, I... First off, I am going to use Eldritch Blast and attack the orc. Alright, roll for attack and roll for damage. 
21 and 6. <laughs> Alright. You, you prepare and throw your Eldritch Blast at the orc, but it simply bounces off his fat stomach, bouncing and exploding in the air, dealing 1 damage to the orc. God damn it. The orc has defense against magic. Okay. The orc now looks at you and opens his mouth and starts breathing blue flames. You you have one chance to roll a save, or you will take uh, thirteen fire damage. Shit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, take your roll and add your dexterity. What is your score? 18. Oh, eight. you got fucking lucky. You leap to the side, barely dodging the blue flames, but your tunic catches fire, dealing two damage. The two guards ready up, throwing their throwing uh, bombs at the orc, dealing 13 damage total, and stunning him for two turns. What is your next attack? Okay, um... Um... I'm definitely not going in close combat. Definitely not doing that. Yeah. Um, what's in the area around the orc? Uh, there are trees about 20 feet behind him, and the two guards are closing in. Okay, I will... Okay, I will use my breath weapon and make... Uh, freeze the area. Well, try and freeze the orc. All right. Uh, roll for roll for attack, roll damage, and roll effectiveness. So two d20s and a ten. Fifteen plus charisma. That's eighteen for attack. Eighteen. All right. Damage. Damage. Um. Breath weapon is D6. Alright. And then how effective? 4 damage. 4? Alright, so 18, 4, and what? how effective? Well, it's ice, so... Um, 17 <laughs> plus... Um, uh, what should I add? Uh, I can't remember. I think that's it. I think it's just flat. Uh, okay, then 17 for effectiveness. All right, you prepare your spell and and breathe your ice. It's not a spell. Or it's not a spell. No, I'm yeah. dragonborn. Right, right. Uh, you prepare and breathe ice at the orc, freezing him in place, dealing four damage. He is now permanently stunned and cannot move. <laughs> The two guards uh, continue throwing bombs, dealing another 8 damage to the orc, but he is completely unfazed. What is your attack? Okay, um... Far away, Lee. Uh, from you, about twelve feet. Twelve feet. Yeah. Come on, man. What's your call? 
Okay, I'm going to go behind him and use the short sword to try and stab at his neck. Alright. Uh, so because of how tall the beast is, you're going to have to roll for a d10 for jump at agility. How how tall is he? About about 30 feet. Okay. So you're going you're gonna to roll a d10 at agility, and then you're going to roll a d20 for a, for damage at strength. So 18 for agility. Oh, so, so 18 for the jump. Yeah, for the jump. Then what else? Uh, roll for attack at strength. Um, 17 for the attack. And then a short sword is a d6, right? Yes. Yeah. Five. <laughs> Alright. You run around behind the beast. You leap into the air, clearing, um, able to clear him. You come down, slashing his neck. Uh, you lodge your sword into his spine, dealing d6 damage and causing bleed. He will be bled. Okay, then I back off. He, he will be bled for three health each turn. Okay. So you back off. The two guards run forward, slipping on the ice and dealing four damage to themselves and each other. I only froze him. I didn't freeze the ground or anything around him. Yeah. Then, uh, I, uh, then reverse all that. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not sure, I'm, I wasn't sure exactly what your spell was. I, th I, I My breath weapon is a 15 foot cone, and I can, and it's in, like, a flat line. Cone. Yeah. It's not, like, an actual cone. Okay, okay. Uh, so, alright, instead of that, the two guards run forward, stabbing at the beast's legs with their weapons. Uh, the, together they deal five damage. The beast now has thirteen health left. Okay. What is your next move? Um. I'm assuming it's a male. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Let's. I'll. I'll give you that. <laughs> I, I'm going to take my short sword. And to stab it in the crotch. <laughs> All right. Taking a few steps, taking a few steps forward, you step between its legs, looking for its dangling penis. You swing at it, cutting it clean off, dealing another eight damage. And once again, bleed for three. And adding another bleed counter, he is now bleeding for five. The orc is dead. Hey. Uh, for that encounter, you gained 113 experience. And uh, you now have an orc horn. I'm not taking that. I'm not taking it. All right. Well, you have leveled up. Yes, I have. The two guards walk over to you, thanking you for your help, and the third one, who was who was hiding behind the building, walks up, asking how you are so strong. All of the villagers come out of their buildings to see that you have killed the beast. You are now showered with gold. How much gold? Uh, 2,680. You are rich. Oh my god. <laughs> a tavern keep walks up to you, offering you a free drink at his pub. Do you accept? Yes, I will accept the free drink. Alright. Uh, he leads you over to his pub, off in the opposite side of town, that is, that is already full of people. You sit down at the bar and you take the drink. You overhear a conversation behind you, people talking about a demon king in the area. Do you listen closer? Uh, yeah, I'll listen, and then if 
depending on what to say, I'll ask if I can help with it or anything. Alright, roll a d10 for perception. Ten. Fucking alright. You overhear the conversation perfectly without any mess. Uh, one of the one of the people says, a uh, scared young woman says that she has seen beasts flying overhead at night, hundreds of thousands of them. They all have horns and a mere smoke. She is quickly shot down by her inner claims by an older gentleman who says there is no such thing, but there is a demon king living in the mountain. Do you approach them asking more questions? Yeah, I'm going to approach them asking. Alright, uh, roll a 20 at charisma. Okay. Unnatural 20. Fucking nat 20 and charisma, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you walk up to well, the ta- you walk up to the table asking about the demon king. What do you say? I'm going to ask what has happened recently for if him to for him to like actually be noticed or whatever is going on you ask another one about the demon king that he was that he spoke of he tells you he tells you that he ran to the beast himself and almost lost his life thankfully he made it out alive the beast is hundreds of feet tall with 17 horns and carries a lantern of souls as well as a sword okay he weaves a story telling you that the beast is a terrifying creature that none should mess with and warns you to stay away Why do I feel like he's the last boss? <laughs> that would be funny, but no. Uh, I, I know another gentleman walks walks up to you. He is missing an arm and one of his legs. He says, I went to the beast myself, and I almost lost my life just like this man. I barely made it out alive, and I've seen the beast myself. He is a terrifying oh. creature. If you go towards him, you will die. Okay. I'm going to ask them about um about the forest he lives in. Uh, you asked about uh, you mean the mountain, right? Riley. The mountain. Yeah. Uh, so you asked about the mountain that the beast lives in, and the guy, the guy who is missing his limbs tells you, the mountain is easily the tallest in all the lands. No man can climb it alone. If you do plan to face the, if you do plan to face this beast, do not go alone. You will not make it to him, let alone be able to kill him. The okay. Ma- just outside a window, you can see a mountain. It is the, the peak is covered in snow, and you see a fire everything from the top it is far too large to be a campfire so you take it that must be the demon's chambers uh, okay yeah uh, what is your next action um uh you should I will huh you should go see a doctor <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking for um spells, so all right. Well, I'm going to be looking for spells with leveling up, so I might get any spells. I'm not sure. I can Just give me a second with that. I can pause while you find a good spell. Yeah, I'd probably do that. All right. So I completely forgot where we were. Uh, you're still in the tavern. You were just warned not to go up towards the mountain. Uh, what is your action? Do you sit down and continue oh. drinking, or do you go and find a doctor? I'll go and find a doctor. Alright. You walk outside, looking around the town, and you see a medic sign. You walk over towards it and enter the building, and you are immediately treated for all your injuries. Awesome. 
the entire procedure will cost you 400 gold. Oh, wait, no. I don't need to do that. I have full health because I leveled up. Right, 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 right. Uh, so you enter the building and ask about it, but you instead leave looking for... Uh, yeah, you look for a forge as well, right? Uh, yeah, I look for a forge. All right, you went. You exit the medic building, looking around the town for a forge to get some armor. You find one off towards the edge of town, and you walk in. You're greeted by an by an older gentleman, who seems to have his fair share of metal limbs. What do you ask? I ask if I can get some better armor. Uh. The man takes a good look at you before exit for disappearing into the back room, coming back with a full set of gold armor, excluding a helmet. Okay, I asked how much it would cost. The gold armor that he brought out would cost you twelve hundred gold. Twelve hundred. Yes. You, you have to understand, um, it is a full set of Dragonborn armor made entirely of gold. <laughs> true, I, I'll... Ask for platinum. I'll take it. Because I need better armor. No, I would say ask for platinum. Oh yeah, uh, get platinum Dragonborn armor, yeah. Uh, after taking another good look at you, he, he takes the gold armor back into the back, into the back room. Returning a couple of minutes later with a platinum chest plate fit perfectly for you, as well as a pair of uh, leggings. Pair of leggings? For what? There, it's armor. Okay. Oh. Uh, he lets you know off the bat that it will cost you 750 gold pieces. Oh. Okay, I will take it. You pay you pay the you pay the man and put on your armor. It is a perfect fit. Your defense is now gone up by another twelve. By another twelve? Yes. Um I have so much armor. <laughs> yeah, you do. On your way out of the forge, the man lets you know that the platinum armor also gives you resist uh, slight resistance to melee and magic attacks. Okay, so you, I... you will take one less damage from each attack. Hey, hey, is that more right? On your way out of the forge, you run into another p a couple more people traveling into the town from the woods. They look to be scarred and crying. You ask, you, uh, do you decide to ask what's wrong? Yeah, I'm gonna go ask what's wrong, what happened. Uh, you walk up to the older woman carrying a child. She seems to be the, the least injured. You ask what happened, and she tells you that she was ambushed by elves and the orc that you killed. The elves are still hiding in the forest, and she has no idea where they are, only that they're somewhere in there. After looking at the orc, she uh, is extremely thankful to you for taking care of the beast, but is still scared of the elves. Do you decide to hunt them? Um, yeah, I'll go hunt the... I'll go hunt the elves. Alright. You walk out of the town, down uh, through the forest, where she came from. After taking a good look around, do you see a small trace of elephant activity? A couple of daggers were left in the ground, and there is no one nearby to claim them. After looking around a bit more, you are completely stumped as you do not find anything. What is your first action? Okay, I am going to take my short sword and poke at the daggers. Alright, you unsheathe your sword and uh, blow to step at the daggers. The daggers shift and you are immediately sworn by 13 elves, all wearing armor with their own daggers. I knew it. 
since okay. you were caught by surprise, the elves have first attack. They already eat one by one, swinging. Uh, you're gonna have to roll a d20. That does give me attack opportunity because they're coming to range. That is true. But they're also small and fast motherfuckers. Yeah, but, um... Attack for opportunity will only do so much for you. Yeah, but when you have, um... I'm, no, I'm just going to start dodging. Or trying my best to dodge. Alright, uh, you're going to have to roll a d20 13 times. <laughs> Plus what? Uh, plus agility. On each roll. So strength, so... Nat 23. Alright, no, no, no. What are, your, what are all of your rolls? I'm going to type them in. Um, I'm going right now. There's... How many? Thirteen. Thirteen. I've rolled one, two, three, four. I've rolled five so far. All right. What are your five numbers so far? Seventeen, twenty-three, sixteen, fifteen, twenty-one. Uh, seventeen, twenty-three. Uh, what? What's the third number? Sixteen, fifteen, twenty-one. All right. And then you have eight more. Alright, what is number six? Um, fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, number seven. Thirteen. Number eight. Fourteen plus three. That's seventeen. Another seventeen. Number nine. Then fifteen. Wait, 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 wait. Alright, yeah. Uh, fifteen. Number ten. Then twenty-two. Nice. Number eleven. Sixteen. All right. Or not? Yeah, sixteen. Uh, twelve. Um, fourteen. Fourteen. And then the last and final roll. Sixteen. All right. So as the elves come at you, you start dodging, jumping around. Uh, you successfully dodge majority of the attacks. You have to take one, two, three. F you only take three hits. Each hit deals four damage, but because of your armor, with your resistance to melee, you only take three damage for each hit. So that is nine damage. Nine damage. I'm at. Sixteen minus nine. Sixteen minus nine. Uh, seven. Seven. So uh, seven health. All right. And for one of the ones that hit me, I am casting a reaction spell. All right. Hellish rebuke, surrounding them in hellish flame. And I need to look up the spell for damage stuff. All right. Uh, so you're casting a rebuke, right? Yeah, hellish rebuke around one of them, surrounding them in hellish flame. Alright, so that will be a... 
Uh, attack, which is a d20. A damage, which is a d20. Wait. I'm... No. Hellish Rebuke is different. Oh, it is? Yeah, cast in time, one reaction, which you take in response to being damaged by a creature within 60 feet of you that you can see. Then, it's a Warlock class spell. I point my finger, and the creature that damaged me is momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. The creature must make a dexterity saving throw. It takes 2d10 fire damage on its failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Alright. So... So, make the saving throw. Uh, you said 2 d tenths, right? Yeah, 2... Yes, 2 d ten fire on failing. Alright, 15. Okay, so you cast your Hell Tribute on the on one of the three elves that dealt damage to you. He is surrounded in flames. With the 15 roll, uh, he dodges and he takes how much damage? It's half, so I roll 2d10, then half the damage. Alright. What are your numbers? Um, eight and six, so eight damage. All right, the elf dodges, taking eight damage and dies. They only have okay. six health. <laughs> All right, uh, it is now your attack. Okay, now I will. Where are they? Are they still surrounding me? They are now scattered around you, yes. At varying distances, but the closest one is four feet. Okay, how... How bunched up are they? Are they within, like, 15 feet? Uh, they are all together within two feet. Okay. I'm going to look all at them. Huh. Burning hands. <laughs> Alright, burning hands. So that is... Uh, roll attack and damage, correct? Yeah. Alright. And I got, um, 21. 21 on attack, and how much damage? Um, I forgot, let me look up real fast. Come on, load. Hmm. <laughs> 3d6 fire damage on a failed save. They have to make a dexterity save again. All of them. That's 2d10, right? Um, no. They need to make a dexterity saving throw first. So. Well, I know, but, like, what, what do I roll? For saving throws, it's, um, it's a d20. Alright. Then I have to I... my spell save modifier, so they have to get higher than a 15. Alright. Uh, first roll, six. Doesn't make it. Uh, second roll, four. Doesn't make it. Another six. Doesn't make it. Ooh, nat 20. Okay, they take half damage on that one. Uh, 13. They don't make it. That's five fourteen. That's make another thirteen. Doesn't make it. A sixteen. Okay, that one takes half. So so far, uh, well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another 20. Okay. A 1. Wow, that dude got fucked. <laughs> he takes critical for that. <laughs> A 6. So. 
and then a 15. Uh, matches mine does make it. Alright, so that means one, two, th only three of the 12 are left standing. They all take half damage and half of what? Ex what is half? They're all dead. Oh. Even the ones that take half damage. Uh, you cast your spell looking at the elves and they all immediately burst into flames, dying. You gain. Yeah, because my thing, I rolled um, a 5-5 five, five, and 4, so 14. Half damage, that's only 7, and if they only have 6 health, um. Sure. Alright. Okay, I want to roll for loop. Alright, roll for loop. I'm mainly going for better weapons or whatever I can get. Alright. 58. Oh. Uh, inside one of the elves' backpacks, you found a rune. It is, uh, you are unsure what it does. In another backpack, you find a, you find a, a short sword, much like your own, but longer and sharper. Okay, I want to roll for Arcana on the rune and the short sword. Uh, Arcana, that is... It's wisdom, so I roll a d20, then add my wisdom on fire. Alright. What is your score? Okay, for the short sword, I'm going to do the short sword first. Alright. So, I got a... A 15 on the short sword. 15 on the sword, and how much on the rune? A 17 on the rune. A 17. Alright. Uh, so you cast Arcana on the sword. The sword reveals its mysteries to you, telling you that it has seen many, many hundreds of lives and warriors. Arcana only tells me if it's magical or not. Oh, okay. Uh, it is not magical. Okay. Uh, ru the rune. It is a magical rune that supplies the wielder, and I mean active wielder, which can have it molded into your armor, with uh, double resistance to magic, but you lose four health permanently. Uh, now that's a debate if I want to keep that or not. I mean, ha you you will now forever take half the damage from magic spells, alongside your one reduced damage from your armor. True. But your health. Um. Okay, I, no, I'll keep the room because double resistance to magic. Alright, uh, do you decide to head back to the village and get it molded into your armor? Yes. Alright, uh, you ha after looting the goblins, you gain uh, 94 ex elves. Or, yeah, elves, whatever. You gain 86 experience and you find 20 gold on their bodies. Uh, you go back to the village, back to the forge, and t ask the owner of the shop if he can meld the rune into your armor. He agrees. He comes back a couple minutes later, and he, the rune has been melded into your chest plate. Nice. You now permanently take uh, half damage from magic attacks while you are wearing your armor. But, while wearing the armor, you also have four less health, so you now have 12 health. I'm also going to go to a doctor to heal myself. Alright. You go back towards the meta shop that you saw earlier. Entering the building, you are treated for all of your injuries. Okay. Okay, I'm going to find, like, an inn to rest at. Alright. Looking around... 
looking around the town, you found a. Uh, looking around to the town, you found you find a small inn that has two open rooms. One will cost four hundred gold a night. The other will cost one hundred and twenty. Which you choose? I'll do the one hundred twenty for one night. All right. You pay up front and enter your room. It is run down, and there is a small bed in the middle of the room, and nothing else. You decide to rest overnight. Okay. In the morning, when you wake up, you hear a lot of noise outside, but it is a celebration. Going outside, you see a banner for a nearby town called Astaroth. You decide it is a good idea to make your way to the town to see what is going on. Following the troop that is not just leaving, you quickly come into the forest where you are ambushed. Again. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, it is roughly the same spot as where you ran into the elves earlier, but this time it is a group of nine goblins with an orc beast. Okay, one second. Alright. What is your first attack? Um, okay, I am going to cost... Cost? <laughs> expit... Expit... <laughs> Expeditious Retreat. Uh, this spell allows me to move at an incredible pace. When I cast a spell, and then as a bonus action on each of my turns until the spell ends, I can take a dash action. Alright. And how it's many? Up to 10 minutes. Alright. Uh, so I'm going to dash fast. I said bop. Alright. And then from, a, from my max. Distance back, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast and attack them. Alright, uh, you dash backwards, had it going back about 30 feet, and you cast Eldritch Blast. Uh, roll for attack and roll for damage. Okay, one second. Okay. Unnatural 20. Fuck you. And a 5. Ha! <laughs> Alright. You ready and um, throw your Eldritch Blast at the Orc Beast. You hit him right between the legs. Uh, or hit the ground right between his legs. He is launched into the air. You instantly kill all of the goblins and the... Orc Beast takes 9 damage. From, so it takes the 5 damage then 4 extra damage from falling? Yes. Eldritch Blast is overpowered! Yeah, it is. Plus you also kill the 9 goblins. But they have 4 health, so. <laughs> yeah. Now I just have to deal with the Orc. I mean, he's already down 9 health. Yeah. But, he still has 41 left. <laughs> what challenge rating are orcs? Uh, regular orcs are challenge rating of 2. Orc beasts are challenge rating of 6. I'm taking on challenge rating 2 and the challenge rating 6 orcs. Yeah. And I'm only level... <laughs> yeah, and you're. And I'm winning. <laughs> yeah, you're massacring this fucker. Uh, the orc beast stands up, looking at you. He. He he he, he throws his arms back, clapping. Uh, you must roll a save, which is uh, d20 plus dexterity. So dexterity save throw. Yeah. Seventeen. Total or before next? Total. Alright. 
uh, you leap into the sky, going about 30 feet up, but it doesn't save you from the shockwave. You still, uh, the shockwave knocks over a few nearby trees, and you take two damage. So, two damage, I'm now down to... Ten. Ten health. Uh, what is your next attack? Okay, I'm going to keep my distance I have already, but dash around to his side and cast Couch of Glass again. Alright, do you want to aim for a specific part? Um, I'm just going for his arm. Well, not like full well, body, but like right next to his arm or something. Alright. Uh, you dash off to his left side. Maintaining your current distance, you can you ready and throw Eldritch Blast, roll attack, and roll damage, and accuracy. Natural twenty for attack. Fuck you. Um, I I do critical damage because of that and eight damage, so that's doubled into sixteen in accuracy. Um. 12 for accuracy. Alright. You, you ready and throw your Eldritch Blast towards his left arm. But, it's, but once again, it stops in the air and blows up. His He now no longer has a left arm. He takes 16 damage plus 4 bleed. I am messing this dude up. He, he now has 21 health. Uh, the orc beast turns to you, readying in on where you are after his days. He he is stopped for a moment, but before you can react, or not before you can react, but he stops for a moment, looking at you, and he starts to. Uh, uh, the the ground around you starts to rumble. He is trying to separate the earth between your feet. Roll a saving throw. Oh, what athletic or strength saving throw? Uh, Dex. Nineteen. Fuck you. You dive to one side, back towards his front. You avoid taking, or you avoid getting split down the middle, but you still take one damage. Okay, I'm down. To what is your next attack? Okay, I'm going to... Did I get closer to him, or...? You can. Uh, no, did I? No, you did not. Okay. I am going to... Cast Eldritch Blast, aiming for his head. Right, once again, roll all three. Da attack, damage, and accuracy. That's twenty for attack. Oh, Fucking hell. Ten for damage. That's twenty damage. Twenty damage. Then accuracy thirteen plus one fourteen. All right. You once again prepare and throw your eldritch blast at the orc beast. It's, it stops between his legs and blows up. He takes the full 20 damage and falls backwards, taking an additional 1 damage. The orc beast is dead. I just messed up 106 feet. And I'm only level 2. Uh, from this encounter, especially because of how difficult it was, you get... 1,233 experience. You are now level 3. 1,233. 33. Hold on. Alright, uh, you cast loot on the Auric Beast and you rolled a 76, correct? Yes. Alright, 
You decide to loot the orc beast. You find a another rune. This t this one looks similar but distinctly different from the one that you already found. Upon looting the rest of his body, you find three three human soldiers' heads inside his stomach, as well as a sword. Do you take the sword? What kind of sword? It is a steel long sword. God, I think it's so uh, broken again. Hello? In his stomach, you found a steel longsword. Alright, I'm going to roll Arcana on the rune and longsword again. Alright. So, for the longsword... 19 on the longsword. Alright. Unnatural 20 on the rune. <laughs> okay. Uh... You cast your card on the on the long sword, and it reveals that it is in fact enchanted. Dealing damage with the long sword will will cause the enemy to bleed for an extra three damage every turn and catch on fire. Oh, I am taking that! <laughs> I am taking that. Uh, you cast your card on the rune, and it is just a blank rune ca uh, carved into some bone. It does nothing. I'll keep the rune with me. Alright, but if we go to Lexar? <laughs> or if... Or I might be able to find someone to actually put something on it and make it useful. True. Uh, after saving all of the... After saving the other villagers from the Orc Beast, you are uh, granted passage back towards their hometown of Astaroth. Do you follow them? Yes. All right, on your way back to the ta to their hometown, uh, there is nothing that goes wrong. You enter in a southern gate. Uh, the town is rather large, and there are guards posted up at towers every twenty feet along the wall. Uh, you see mountains uh, surrounding the town, as well as a forest that you exited. Entering the upon entering the village, you see. Uh, I'm sorry. You, you see that it is very lively. You see hundreds of people walking around doing their daily shopping in, in a market in center town. Do you investigate? Um, yeah, I'll look around. Walking around the town, you find nothing exactly of interest other than a witch's shop on the back side of town. I'll go check out the witch's shop. All right. Walking up to the witch's shop, you start to hear weird voices, weird whispers telling you to turn back and go away. You ignore them and enter the shop. You are greeted by a witch who, who looks to be a very young woman, very beautiful. But in fact, you know that that is not real. Talking yeah. to the witch, you ask her if she could enchant the rune you found, and she agrees, but it will cost you. Well, what kind of enchantment can she do? I ask that. What kind of enchantment can you do? Uh, you ask what she, what enchantment she can give, and she says anything. Do you? Okay. Uh, but she repeats that it will cost you. Do you still go along with the enchantment? Um, how much would it cost? Uh, she corrects you. No, I do not deal with money. I, in fact, deal with something far greater. Okay, what, then what is the cost? Uh, depending on the rune that you that you choose to get enchanted, you will either lose health, lose mana, or lose a leg. Okay, what would melee resistance make me lose? Melee resistance would make you lose a bit of mana. Oh. Okay. 
do you choose to enchant the room? Um. I don't know. Uh, well, how much mana do you have? I don't know. <laughs> That's the one thing I know D and D people do. That's mana. No one ever does that because it's a pain to deal with. <laughs> well, you're. Uh, uh, they don't use mana. They use spell slots. Yeah. So then, it, well, it would still impact you a little bit. And since I'm level three, I now have um two spell slots. Yep. If you choose to take the enchantment, you will lose 20 mana, and since you are a dragonborn wizard, you have 400, so you will now have 380 mana. That means you can still, nothing really changes except uh, one of your spells will deal one less damage. Alright, no, I'll take it. Alright. She takes the rune from your hands, disappearing into a little tent. She comes back a few minutes later, and the rune is now glowing blue and purple. She hands it to you, and you can feel your mana getting sucked away into the aether, but you but you still have uh, mana resist. Plus two. Okay. Bro. <laughs> Bro, you're becoming maple. <laughs> Alright, now you are forced out of the witch's hut and decide to go back to the center of town. What do you do from here? Um, I am going to go to the tavern ask them for information. You should get the root put in your armor. Oh yeah, go to the forge and do that. I forgot. <laughs> uh, you look around and find a nearby forge. You enter the forge asking if the man can put the roan into your armor and he agrees. You hand him your leggings, and he comes back a little bit later with it molded into the crotch. Okay. Your deck now glows blue and purple. <laughs> Are you going to deny? No, I'm not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, you exit. You exit the forge, going towards a tavern to ask for information. Okay. Upon entering the tavern, you find one person sitting at the bar and no one else. What do you ask? I ask for just information, any information you can give me. He he looks at you and starts sharing his wisdom. He tells you. Never be an adventurer. It will never work out. You will die. He tell he warns you of the monsters and darkness that awaits you in your future. I guess he doesn't know that I took out challenge rating <laughs> six beast. He does not. So. He does not. <laughs> what is oh, okay. your action from here? Um, can I ask him about the area? You ask about the forest and mountains outside of the town. He tells you the, out, the mountains and forests are full of dark creatures that will kill you. Do not go there. Okay. Is it the same forest I killed um, the orc beast in? No. No different forest, okay. Um, I say thank you, and then I'm going to go to an inn to take a rest. Alright, you thank the man for his, for his time and information. On your way out, you fall into a trap door underneath, or right beside the door, and you are now trapped underneath the tavern. And this is where a spell comes in handy. Yeah. 
But luckily, I or sadly, I don't have that. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you do? I will. Is is the what exactly like type of room am I in? Uh, looking around the room, you see three lit torches set into a broken pentagram. The pentagram is surrounded by runes that you cannot read or understand, and there are four pillars holding up the basement. Okay. Are there any books or anything around the room? There are three books strewn across the entirety of the room with their pages ripped out and torn. Uh, can I look at the books so I can investigate them? Uh, you walk over to one of the book covers that are still intact, intact looking at it. There is no information on the outside and it is perfectly clad in red leather. Okay. I'm going to grab one of the torches and look further around into the room for like any doors or anything. Uh, you pick up one of the torches looking around the room. You find a pair of doors back where you fell in, but they are locked from the outside. What, what are they made out of? They're made out of pure bone and steel, all enchanted to be unbreakable. I've seen people do this before. I'm going to just knock on the door. <laughs> you walk up to the door, knocking on it, but it launches you backwards. You land dead center of the pentagram, and the torch goes out. Okay. I'm going to try and use precipitation and relight the torch. You cast your spell to relight the torch, but it instead fails. Uh, the pentagram fit, uh, completes itself and lights up. Your magic has been stolen from you. You can no longer use that spell. Shit. Okay, I'm going to try to get out of the pentagram. You walk out of the pentagram but are blocked by a magical barrier. You have two What's turns. What's the ground made out? The ground is made out of stone. You have two turns to escape before you summon the boss. Okay, I am going to try and break the pentagram with my long sword. All right. You unsheathe your long sword, swing at, swing at the ground. You chip part of the pentagram away, but it does nothing. Well, that, that's not right. It kind of should lose power after. I said you chip a small part away. It's like it, it's like punching a wooden board a lot. Yeah, eventually it'll break, but you're just gonna break off splinters. It won't. It won't do much. Going with it. Try and break it. All right, you keep you keep swinging your sword, and you manage to get all the way through one piece of the pentagram, and the spell stops. You can feel your magic, you can feel your magic flooding back into your body, and the barrier falls. Okay, I'm going to get out. You exit the pentagram safely. Okay. Um, can I draw, or what's the like the wall made out? Of? The walls are made out of stone. Oh, okay. Um. My man, what's your action? 
Ah, Juan. Isn't this a question, Jack? I'm here for work. Okay, I am going to. I need to check precipitation. I forgot the full length of the spell. Alright. Precipitation. I've looked these all up like five times, so they're just in my search bar. Okay, um, I am going to, I'm going to jump, try and jump out, out of, um, up, like, try to jump up to the, um, hole. The, the trap door? Alright. Yeah, the trap door. Uh, roll a d20 at agility, or at dexterity. I swear to God, if you get a fucking net, when it would have hurt you. 21? <laughs> Alright, you bend uh, you bend your legs and leap up towards the trap door. You are able to grab onto the trap door and climb out of the hole, exiting the tavern. The man that was at the bar is now gone. What action oh. do you take from here? Okay, where exactly was the trap door? It was right it was right in front of the door. Right in front of it? Yes. Do you realize what happens if this sits on the counter all night? And it's, uh, okay, scary. I'm going to step over the trap door. Okay, well, did you see it sitting on the counter? I did not. He got his food after I did. I'm not blaming anybody. I'll press it. Hey, pause the I'll be back. Alright, uh... You exit the trap door. You step over the trap door, exiting the tavern. I'll be right back. Alright. Time to pause. Alright. Uh, you climb out of the trap door and step over the hole, exiting the tavern. Okay. Now, um. I'm going to go find an inn to rest at. Alright. You walk through the town and you find an inn nearby. You enter the building and ask for a room. She tells you there are three rooms available. One will cost two hundred gold, one will ask one will cost four hundred, and one will cost nine hundred. Uh I'll take the one for two hundred. Alright. Well, I'm only staying for one night. Uh you pay you pay the two hundred gold uh, pieces up front and enter the room. You uh, the room is slightly better than the other one you were last in. You lay on the bed and rest overnight. Okay. Uh, when you wake up in no. the morning, when you wake up in the morning, not, 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 nothing is different. What is your first action? Okay, I am going to. I am going to go to the, which is HUD, and ask for information. Alright. Exiting the tavern, you head back towards the witch's hut. Entering the hut, you no longer hear the whispers, and you are come face to face with the same witch as last time. You ask her for information, and she tells you, if, you, if you're looking for a monster to kill, there is one in the mountains that could use some slang. Other than that, there's nothing else of interest nearby. I'm going to ask her about the pentagram that I saw under the tavern. You ask about the pentagram under the tavern, and she tells you uh, that it that she has no knowledge of it and has never seen it herself. Okay. I asked her, um, is there any magical items I can get to help me on my journey? 
Uh, you ask about any any extra magical items, and she denies having ever seen you or helped you before. She tells you that she does not uh, dabble in magic. What? <laughs> you know, it's it's a witch. They're gonna do that, all right? Yeah. They're stingy. Okay. I'll exit the witch's hut. All right. Then um. Go to the mountain. Fine, I'll go to the mountain. <laughs> if you clearly want me to. I'm sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, it... sorry. I don't think I'm prepared to deal with a demon king. <laughs> I mean, you took down a level six orc beast. Okay. <laughs> Demon kings are so much worse. That is true. <laughs> uh, you exit the witch hut and exiting the village, and you find yourself now in another forest at a crossroad. Well, at, at least it's not a devil. That devils it, are so. Oh yeah. Uh, the road splits into four pieces. Which way do you go? Um. North, south, east, north, south, east, and west. You came from the south. Okay, I'm going to take. It's really just a forest, so. Where's the wind coming from? The wind is coming from the east. <laughs> Which direction did I come from? Uh, you came from the south. Okay, I'll go east. Alright. Uh, you head down. You head down towards the east, uh, away from the mountain, towards the ocean. You find nothing interesting on your way there, other than a few dead elf bodies. Okay, I'll head back to the fork road, then head north. Uh, yeah. turning around from the ocean, you head back towards the crossroads instead of heading north. Other than a few elf dens that are empty, you find nothing. Okay. I'll go, um, west. Alright, you head back to the crossroads and head west up towards the mountain. Uh, on your way there, you find a small turtle carrying a rabbit. Okay. <laughs> well, it's fun, fuck you. <laughs> what, you wanna be syrup? <laughs> Fucking massive flying turtle. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to keep heading straight down the road. Alright, you continue on west, and you come to the base of the mountain. Uh, I believe it is... That. No. That. That. Uh, a bit of the mountain, you come to a mountain gate that is left slightly ajar and abandoned. Okay. Um, I just got the email. Is there any like writing on the wall? Uh, there's a little bit of a graffiti that says "Beware." Okay, I'm going to walk along the base of the mountain to the right uh, you for start... a couple of minutes. Alright. And this. then walk back. I didn't prepare for this. Uh, you start walking along the base of start walking along the base of the mountain and you find a cave entrance that has not been entered in a long time. Okay. Do you decide to enter? Is there any light or wind coming from the cave? There is no light, but there is wind. Or that must mean there's somehow a wind source or some type of thing. Do you enter the mountain? Yes, I'll enter the mountain with my sword ready. Alright. Uh, drawing your long sword, you enter the cave. Not long sword, short sword. Uh, right. Drawing your short sword, you enter the cave, being careful of your step. 
Uh, you cannot see anything. A couple of more steps in, you come to a fall. Okay, I'm going to bring out my torch and use precipitation to light it. Uh, you pull out your torch and light it. You cannot see anything at the bottom, but there is another piece of the cave just over a gap. Are there any, like, big rocks or sticks in the cave next to the fall? There are not. Okay, I am going to take um, a stick of incense I have and drop it down the fall. Alright, uh, you take the incense out of your backpack and drop it over the cliff. You count the time for it to hear a noise, and you do not hear anything. Oh, that's the abyss. <laughs> that is not the abyss. Okay, I'll go into the cave entrance, the cave entrance next to the hall. All right. Uh. You continue on into the cave, jumping over the chasm. Uh, you continue to you continue to explore further, and eventually you find a dead end, with a little bit of writing on the wall. Do you decide to try to read it, or do you leave? Uh, what what um race is the writing in? Elven. So. Elven, so Sylvan. Yeah, I can read that. <laughs> All right. So I'll read it. See what it says. Uh, you just you start reading what was written on the wall, and you quickly realize it was an incantation. Uh, after finishing what was on what was written, I a wall falls down behind you, and you are trapped. <laughs> okay. What was the incantation? Uh, it was a warning and a spell. Okay. I will... I'm going to investigate the wall that fell behind me. Uh, upon investigating the wall, you find another pentagram. This one completed and painted in red blood. Um. <laughs> what's the wall made out of? Stone? The wall is made out of stone, but it has been enchanted. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try throwing the torch into the area of the pentagram. Well, the pentagram is on the wall, and you're looking at it. Well, no, like, I'm going to, like, get out from in front of it, like, to the side of the wall. Then I'm going to throw the torch, like, at it. Alright. Uh, taking a few steps back, you th prepare and throw your torch. The torch hits the wall and vanishes. So is the portal. <laughs> oh, do I have rope? You do not. No, I might. Do you, uh, do you? Unless... I do not. Okay. Hey, on, no, I have cloths. I can make rope out of that. Alright. Uh, you spend... Right, so I'm going to take my cloths and wrap them around one of my daggers. Alright. And while holding on to the end of the cloth rope I've made, toss the dagger into the pentagram and try to pull it back up. Alright. You, you tie the dagger to the rope and toss it. Uh, once the dagger has entered the portal, you pull, but it does not come back. You get no leeway. Oh, 
Okay. The rope moves about as much as it would being stuck in an actual wall. I'm going to... I'm going to cut with my last dagger. I'm going to cut some of the rope off, leaving like a bit sticking out of the wall. Then I use precision precision to light the rope sticking out of the wall on fire. Alright, you pull out your dagger and cut your rope. You now have four feet of cloth rope. There are a couple of inches left hanging out of the wall. You light it on fire and it quickly burns through the portal, but you hear or see nothing. Hmm. Okay. This is really fun. What are you doing? You're playing D and D. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this we can't, you know, play together because he lives in the U.S. and I live in Canada, and we're on lockdown. <laughs> yeah. This 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 works. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put my hand on the edge of it, then try to like step through the portal. All right, you lay your hand on the on the edge of the portal. Your thumb sinking into it. You are you cannot back down now. You raise your legs and step through the portal. You come out of the floor in a different room. Is is it the same room I was in at the tavern? It is not. Okay, I'm going to exit out of the pentagram portal and the other room. Uh, you, you can't go back. I know. So now you're in. T so now you're full commit in the next room. Yeah. All right. This is the layout of the room. Boss room two. Shut up. <laughs> Right, that looks like a Legend of Zelda boss room. <laughs> it kind of does, yeah. Uh, you e you exit the portal in the bottom right corner of the platform. Looking around, you see chains holding up a massive pot. Okay, can can I see the dagger and torch I threw? You, I threw through it. Uh, the dagger is hanging out of the pot. The rope is tied around part of the chain, or part of the bottom right chain. What about the torch? The torch is gone. So I'm going to guess, whatever this is, doesn't like fire. <laughs> Possibly. Which might mean that the fire is a weakness of it. Possibly. <laughs> Okay, um, so my dagger is hanging out of the, um, pot. Uh, your dagger is in the pot, but you see the rope that was tied to it. Okay, I, can I try to, um, can I try and look inside the pot? You can. In. you can. Can I? Yes, yes, you can. So you you edge your way over towards the pot, being careful not to step on any of the several hundred runes that have been painted into the stone. You look inside the pot, and it looks like a massive eye. The dagger is sat right in the middle of it, floating above the liquid. Okay, I'm going to use precipitation to make. A bit of wind. Try and move the dagger towards me. All right, you cast your spell uh, to summon some wind, and the dagger does not budge. Is there any writing anywhere in the room? Uh, there is no writing, but you do see a cavern way above you. 
A what? You do see a cavern entrance way above you. About 300 feet. 300 feet. So you're kind of, you're fucked. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to look around the room, being careful not to step on any room. Uh, you explore the room, and there's nothing to note other than the runes that are painted on the floor with chalk and blood, and the chains. Okay. Can I roll Arcana on the chain? You can. Alright, uh, so roll our card on, that will be, there are 8 chains, so 8 d20s. Or do you just want to do 1? Okay, first one, 18. Eighteen. Second one, 15. Third one, 18. Um, fourth one, 17, fifth one, 21, sixth one, 21, seventh one, 16, last one, 20. All right. Uh... Five of the eight chains reveal nothing to you. You get no information on if they are enchanted or not. But the three that you rolled, 21, 21, and 20 on, they all tell you that they have been enchanted to float and carry any weight. Okay. Are the runes on the ground, are they all the same? Uh, there are three similar runes, the rest are all gibberish. Okay, I'm going to roll a kind of on the three similar rooms. All right, that is going to be one D100 roll. One D100? Yes. Ninety-four. Ninety-four. Fucking hell. Uh, you cast Arcana on the runes, and you are told that by connecting the runes to their counterparts, which is not the three similar ones, but the three. But they all are connected to a different room, somewhere in the room. By connecting them to the by their counterparts, you will summon the owner of the cave, and will be granted a wish. Okay, I will try to connect the runes to their corresponding one. Uh, there are twenty-seven runes in the room, excluding those three. Okay, I will start investigating them and trying to find the corresponding room. Uh, you take your time investigating each of the 27 extra runes, but you find no information on how they will be connected. Can I roll, um, Arcana on one of the random runes around the room? Uh, you roll our you can, you can roll Arcana on all of the twenty seven runes. Okay, I'll do that. But once so once again you have to roll twenty seven d one hundreds, and the only way that you will be revealed which one is which is you're rolling a ninety five or higher. Okay. So. Well, let's get them going. What are your 27 numbers? Oh, okay, so far the closest one has been 87. How many have you rolled? Like five. Uh, give me the numbers, you fuck. 8, 9, 20, 9, 21, 87. Okay. 69. <laughs> nice. 69. <laughs> 91. 69. <laughs> 26. 66. 93. Ooh. 
95. Ooh. 68. 22. 22. Critical fail. <laughs> uh, one second. Uh, that is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen rolls. Okay, now next one, eighty-three. Uh, eighty-three, number sixteen. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven, number seventeen. Ninety-six. Ninety-six, number eighteen. Eighty-four. 84, number 19. 90. 90, number 20. 26. 26, number 21. 33. 33, number 22. 61. 61, number 23. 19. 19, number 24. 49. 49, number 25. One second. 59. 59 at number 26. 64. 64 at number 27. That is all. 84. What? 84. Uh, okay. So, out of your 27 rolls, there were only two that were successful. 95 up. You got 95 and 96. Your two high, high enough rolls revealed to you that... One of the two runes corresponded to one of the three. The other one that you rolled 96 on is worthless. Okay. The two that could correspond to the three, I will connect them. Uh, we only got one that corresponded. So pulling out, pulling out one of your daggers, you start, uh, you, car you carve a line between that one rune and one of the three that needed their counterparts. They those two start glowing. The other two runes still need to find their counterparts. If I had detect magic, this would go so much faster. Yeah. The warlocks don't get detect magic. So what is your next move? Okay, I am. Okay, I'm going to try and um, like read the runes. All right. Uh, so the twenty-six runes that you, so the, the last twenty-six runes. Uh, all right. Uh, you d you go around trying to read them. Three of them stand out as interesting. The rest are gibberish and mean nothing. Oh, the three that um stand out are which ones are they? Uh, uh, they are not the three that needed their counterparts, and it is not one of is not the one that you already found. Okay. Can I read the um ones that stand out? You can. Roll a d twenty. Roll three d twenties for perception. Well, what language is it? It's orc. Orc. I can't speak orc. All right. Well, you can still try and uh, understand them. Yeah. So roll three d twenties. Don't you fucking dare get a nat 20. What do I add? Per uh, perception. That my fire is wisdom, so. Alright. So then, yeah, roll 3 20 is add wisdom.
the 115, 119, 120. All right. Uh, the first of the three that you try to read, you cannot notice anything distinct about it other than the fact that it has a similar shape to the other three, but backwards. Uh, the second one, you are able to understand it, and you are, and you figure out that it is one of the counterparts, but you're not sure which one it goes to. The third one means nothing. Okay, I am going to look at those, the ones that, the one that I know is a corresponding one to. One of them. So you look at the you look at the room that you rolled nineteen on, and the other two rooms are the counterparts, and you have to figure out which one goes to which. Wait, I rolled a nineteen and a twenty. <laughs> yes, I know, and the twenty means nothing. So I already said that. Oh. Alright, so I'm going to look at the one I rolled nineteen on and the three to see which one I might possibly. Uh, once again, one of the other three is already connected to their counterpart, so it's uh, only the two. Uh, looking at them closely, you're able to interpret that one of them uh, matches perfectly up to the room that you found, but it's just they are reversed, so you, and the other one uh, is flipped or rotated. I will, I will connect the do that match perfectly. Alright, uh, Paul, your negative, you once again uh, draw a line between the runes and they start to glow. You have to find one more rune. Now, if there's going to be a test, I'm going to try and cast precipitation at some of the runes to see if any of them react to magic. Alright. Uh, using your spell, you do a mass cast. All of the runes are covered in fire. Nothing happens. Or, wait, no, wait, no, I'm dumb. Uh, seven of the runes evaporate. Wait, seven of them evaporate? Uh, the number has gone down from 25, uh, from 27 to, uh, 20. So there are now 20 runes you have to decipher. No, I'll do the same thing, but with, um, with Eldritch Blast. Alright. You cast- I'm not going to cast it directly at the runes. I'm going to cast it, like, it's just, like, going to skim them. Like, okay. Uh, you prepare and throw your Eldritch Blast. It skims over the top of all of the runes. Sixteen more evaporate. There are four left. I'm getting things done. You fucking are. Alright, this time I'm going to use burning hands. Alright. And do the same thing. Nothing, yeah, you cast your burning hands over the remaining four runes and nothing changes. What's your next move? I'm going to roll Arcana on the pot. Alright. Uh, 
So if you're going to roll Arcana on the pot, that is going to be a d20. Add wisdom. Um, 18. 18. Uh, the pot is enchanted. It, it contains 437 souls. You are unable to make contact with any of them. One of them is the goddess that will grant you a wish. The rest are instant lives. Um. How many are left? Uh, how many runes? Yeah. Four. Okay, I'll roll our con our con well, on the last four runes again. Alright. So I want to be done. Uh, four more D100s. 67. 99. Haha. <laughs> uh, 26. What's the fourth? Um. Fifty-three. Fifty-three. Alright. Uh, once again, since three of them failed, the 99, when you roll 99 on, reveals itself as the perfect shadow of the one that you need to find. Um, so I know which one I need to find? Roughly. This is the shadow, so it lo it's the same shape and everything, but it's, you know, faded and extended. It's too large. Okay, I will find the one that looks like the shadow. Upon closer inspection, the one you need to find uh, is drawn in blood. And is uh, it is identical to the one written in shadow, but it is too far away to be connected to the other three with a direct line. So there must be another way to connect it. Maybe. A paladin can get the shit done instantly. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't make paladins. <laughs> yeah, you're not playing a paladin. <laughs> like with a with a paladin, all you need to do is sink your sword into the rune and slash at the other three, and it's done. <laughs> because fuck paladins. Not the game, the character. The game was actually yeah. really fun. As we've well, discovered. Warlocks don't deal with really goddesses. They deal with more devils. Yeah. Because I literally made the pact with the fiend. <laughs> Alright. Uh, do you need a hint? A little bit of a hint? Maybe. Alright. The, the, what you're floating, what you're standing on is floating. There, there are things over the edge that you could that you could possibly use. Can I try to use them to move it or make a line? Uh, possibly. Okay, I'll try. Well, first you have to go over and cast inspect or perception. Oh yeah. Uh, I'll go do that. All right. Uh, that will be a. That'll be four D twenties and a D ten. Okay, well, one was a nat twenty. So nat twenty. Let me let me outline that. All right, a nat twenty. What is the second one? Um, sixteen. All right, number three. Um. 20. Another 20. And 15. Alright, and then what was your D10? 10. Alright. Looking over each of the four edges, you see bits and pieces of or, yeah, bits and pieces of wood. With your D10, you were able to grab them. 
You now have th oh. you now have the three large pieces of wood. Can I use them to help make a line over to the um the room? Yes, yes, you can. But how are you going to do that? I don't know. Do you want my advice? What? Lay them over the pot. <laughs> Lay them over the pot, okay. Yeah. Of course, you're going to have to walk over the pot, which you have to roll AD20 and add agility or dexterity. Well, I'll do it. All right, you start. You lay the three planks down in a perfect line over the, over the pot, and as you're drawing your line, you have to walk over the plank. Roll your d20, add your dexterity. Um. Okay, nineteen. Nineteen total. Uh. As you are walking over the plank, you slip up a little bit close to the end and roll over the other plank. You are safe. Oh my god. You finish the line and connect it to the third rune, and the four, the three planks of wood burst into ash. The, four, the eight chains break, and the pot flips upside down, revealing the goddess. She tells you that you have one wish for completing her puzzle. What do you wish for? Well, I need something to get out of here, so... Can I wish for wings? <laughs> uh, she lays out before you the rules of her wishes. You cannot wish for more wishes. Duh. You cannot wish for more power, or money, or love. Anything else is on the table. So, wings. Alright. You ask the goddess if she can give you wings, and she grants. Your wings are demon wings, matching, your, matching the color of your armor. They are larger than your arms stacked three times over. So now you have wings. <laughs> okay. Now I can get out of here. Alright. Uh, the, the goddess vanishes back into her chamber pot. The chains reconnect to the pot, and everything turns to as it was before you entered the room. Except this time, the runes have randomized themselves, changing places. Okay. You start... I grab my dagger. You can grab your dagger. Okay, I'm gonna grab my dagger. Uh, you fly up a couple of feet and fly over to grab your dagger. It moves, uh, it moves away with your hand without any issue. Flying up towards the cavern entrance atop the, uh, atop the cave, you make it within 20 feet, but the cavern uh, closes and you are now trapped. Oh my god. You, you hear something whispering into your mind. You have four minutes to escape, or you will face your consequences. I cast Eldritch Blast. <laughs> you cast Eldritch Blast on. Okay. At the wall. Uh, uh, since it's an inanimate object, it's going to be attack, accuracy, damage. And effectiveness. So forty twenties. Um, attack nat twenty. Twenty. So plus three to twenty three. So twenty three. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um. Is that two sixteens? No. Okay. Um. Um, 18, the 18 was a 6, or the 16 was an 18. 
Oh, uh, the, the 16 was 18, not 16. Yeah. All right, so 23, 18. What are your other two? 14. 14 and... And 18. And 18. All right. Oh, my fuck. Okay. You, uh, while flying, you, catch your Eldritch, you cast your Eldritch Blast. It launches you backwards a couple feet. It strikes the wall right where the cavern entrance was. It does nothing. Okay. Um. The voice in your head speaks again. You have three minutes left. I'm going to start looking around as fast as I can for an exit. Uh, in a panic, you start you start flying around, checking all the walls for possible exit, and you find nothing. I'm going to look for any writing or runes I can find. Upon another inspection of the wall for runes or writing, you find nothing. The voice in your head speaks again. Two minutes left. Don't get me wrong. I love my parents. Mm. Feel happier, or luckier. Can I see if there's anything above me? Uh. You fly around to the uh, closest ceiling of the cavern. You find nothing. I feel like this is your way of forcing me into a fight. No, there, there is a way out. Um. Can I go back to the spot I flew up and look around there? So, well, you're already fl you're already floating at the ceiling. Like you, you just looked at the ceiling and found nothing. Why would you go back? No, to where I flew up at um, from the room. Oh, from the platform. Yeah. Uh, you go back to the platform. What do you do from here? <laughs> I'm going to look around for any other exit. Uh, you fly around frantically looking for another exit and you find nothing. The voice in your head speaks again. You are out of time. Um, I ready my sword and prepare. Uh, do you land? I'm going back up out of the platform. All right, and landing up there. Uh, so you fly back up to the platform? Well, no, where the cave entrance was. Uh, so you go back to the ceiling? Yeah. Alright, so you fly back up to the ceiling, looking around. The platform explodes into into dust. The, god, the pot with the goddess on the souls is now gone. And you see a massive beast, 300 feet tall with a, a pig-like face, and it is larger than anything you've ever seen before. It does not know where you are. Oh my god, I'm happy I got out of there. <laughs> what is your first move? Um, I'll try and move around quietly. I'll try and move around quietly to inspect it. Alright. Uh, flying around uh, as quietly as you can, you get to see a full shot where you get to see the entirety of the demon. It is a Nalfishne, a pig demon. It is a tier 8. Um. And through your natural knowledge, you know that the Nalfish Ney has, uh, has resistance to magic and melee attacks up to level 4. This is why I wanted to get a small encounter first. <laughs> I wanted to bubble up. 
<laughs> well, you're stuck now. Um, the Nalfish Nay speaks. This is taking too long. Where are you? Does it have like multiple eyes or just two or it, one? It has just two. Okay. I'm going to do drive-bys and slash that to the eyes to, to try and find it. Alright, uh, roll accuracy and roll damage. So, two d20s. Or how many times are you going to attack? Um, at least, yeah, at least twice. Alright, so then roll four. Once at each eye. Alright, roll four. So... So first one will be accuracy on the first attack. So unnatural twenty for the first attack out of one eye. So that's accuracy. What damage? Um. <clears throat> that would be five. Five. And then accuracy on the second attack. And for the second attack, nat 20 plus 323. 23 and damage. Um, 12. 12. Alright, you fly down from the, uh, from the cavern ceiling, diving towards its left eye. You swing your sword as, fa as hard and fast as you can. You scrape its cheek, dealing five damage. On your second way through, uh, you hit, you stab him right in the eye. He can, he is now blind in the right eye. He took twelve damage and is now bleeding. He will be bled for two damage every round. Okay, I'm going to pull out my long sword. All right. Then I'm going to go for the left eye again. All right. So that will be. Uh, so once again, uh, accuracy and damage. 23. 23. 12. And 12. Again, fuck you. <laughs> and longsword, remember. Yep. It's bleeding and fire. It does three extra damage on bleed and it uh, causes fire. Uh, you fly down and you slash at the Nalfache's left eye again. Yeah, you connect. You do not put out his left eye, but you slash. You deal another. You deal, you deal an additional twelve damage, as well as the two damage for its bleed, and then uh, increase bleed by three. So, and then he will be kept on fire. He takes two fire damage every turn. You have dealt thirty-six damage to the Nalfish Day. Hell yeah. But you don't know how much health it, it, it... What was that? What? You don't know how much health it has. No, I don't. Alright. Uh, what... What is your... Well, actually, no, it's now fish day's turn. Uh, the big now fish day turns towards you, now knowing where you are. I have found my next meal. It pulls out a small uh, series of small daggers, tossing them at you. Uh, this will be. Oh. Now I have to roll uh, four d20s. Oh well, yeah, you have to roll to break my arm. I got three and six, so the first two daggers miss, and then I get a six and a seventeen. So if the first three daggers missed. The last one breaks. You would have to get higher than a 31. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Uh, well, the first two daggers miss, the last one hits, but bounces off your armor, dealing one damage. Okay, so I'm down to 17. 
What is your next move? Right. Uh, now Fishnay takes... Uh, five. Takes another seven damage. Forty. Now Fishnay has taken 43 damage. Okay, I'm going to go for its left eye again. Alright. But as I go through to slash it, I'm going to move to its right side. Alright, so you're going for a dodge. That means... So I'm going to slash and move to right. <sighs> uh, so then roll for accuracy, roll for damage. 23. 23, again. And damage? 6. Six. Uh, you fly down, ready, uh, ready to slash at the Nalfish Nay, but you dodge to the right side. Uh, the Nalfish Nay rolls for a uh, rolls for save and rolls a nat twenty. You completely miss, and he now has your longsword. <laughs> and then add another seven damage for burn and bleed. The Nalfish Nay has taken fifty damage. How much health do these things have? Well, this is a tier 8 demon. He has 200 health. Okay, so I've already almost halved it. You've got 50. That's a quarter. Yeah, almost half. That's a quarter. No, I've done 50. I'm almost at half. He has 200 health. The hundreds half of 200. Yeah. And I've got 50, I'm half of 100, so I'm almost at half of 200. Uh, just whatever. <laughs> you said it in a very fucking strange way. Alright. Uh, it is now your attack. Okay, I will try and freeze his left eye. Alright, you go for a freeze. So that is going to be uh, 3d20s. Unnatural 20 for uh, the hit. Alright. Uh, effectiveness. 20. 20 for effectiveness. Is it natural? Nat uh, so then that's. Alright. And then what is the uh, third? Then the, for the third d20. Um, what's the third d24? Oh, grab. A damage. Oh, damage. No, that's um d6. Right, right, right. Because it's yeah. Twelve. Fuck you. All right. Uh, you you blow your ice breath at the Nalfish Nay. He makes a saving throw and gets a twelve. Half. Majority of the, or yeah, half of the breath hits his arm. He can only use his left arm. The rest hits his eye. He is blind for three rounds. He takes under seven damage from burn and bleed. He you, he has taken 57 damage. Okay. He has built a total of one damage to me, and I dealt how much? 57. Well, it's because... It, I, feel, I feel like I'm the challenge rating higher than him. You do realize, even though he's a tier 8, he's also, you know, a big fat pet, a big fat ass pig demon. Yeah, but still, he, he's supposed to be able to deal more bro, damage than me. Bro, he's, he's slower than the fucking turtle minions. <laughs> but he also hits like a fucking planet, so... <laughs> Alright, what is next move? Okay. What's... Wait, no. yeah, going to wait, 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 it's, it's his turn, it's his turn for attack. I know, but I came with the idea. Okay, 
The novice looks at you and start and starts shooting fire beams out of his eyes or his left Wait, eye. He's blind. Just because he's blind doesn't mean he can't use his magic. So he has one beam which melts through the ice. He, he's no longer blind. Uh, the laser connects with, or the lasers come moving towards you. Uh, explosions. Uh, the explosions deal. Dodge. Well, you have to make a saving throw. So you have to dodge for uh, the explosions and the laser itself. So that's two d twenties. Okay. Um. So nineteen and nineteen. Uh, you dodge the laser and the explosions, taking th taking four damage from each. You've taken you've just taken eight damage. So I am down to nine. <laughs> and then now officially takes another seven damage from burn. That is sixty four. Uh, the burn has has worn off. He will no longer take the four damage from burn, only three from bleed. Where is my short sword or my long sword? Man? In his right hand. In his right hand. Okay. Okay. Not gonna bother with that. Alright, this move is going to rely on him not having good wisdom. Alright. I'm casting Phantasmal Force. Haha. <laughs> well, uh, I got some news for you. Now, Fishne is one of the smartest demons in the underworld. It is, it will critically fail no matter what. Well, Riley? Yeah. Are you, are you good? Yeah. Alright. So, you're. He has to roll with him, saving throw. Yeah. But, with, with, but with this, if I get anything higher than a three, it fails. So, you, you can still go through with it, but. Low fucking chance. Well, um, wait a minute. Yes. Alright. What? Okay. I am going to cast tech on just double checking protections from good and evil. We can double check. What's an aberration? What's what? Really? Yeah. What was that? I'm Figuring out what aberration is. Adoration? Aberration. Aberration. Uh, let me see. Uh, something that is out of the normal. Unexpected. So, um, what is this creature's name? Nelfishne. Because I literally found this and it says the quintessential. I can't talk. Quintessential aberrations are aboliths, beholders, mind flyers, and salabi. But I have pronounced that. But I don't think it's any of those, so. It's not. That won't be very much use. God damn. It's not. 
not a fae, it's not a fiend, and it's not undead. But would it would demons be classified as undead? No. No? Okay. Only necromancer minions are undead. And most necromancers are tier nine. Okay, I am going to use my sword, my short sword, to attack the um, left eye again. All right, uh, that's accuracy and damage. Uh, yep. Two times over. So, mm, one. What was that? You 19 1. Bro, you're cutting really bad. 19. Okay, 19 and for damage, 5. 5. Alright. And. Alright, uh, you fly down, going towards his left eye. You manage to cut out a gash just above his eye, dealing 5 damage and causing an extra 1 damage of bleed. He takes another 4, another 68 damage. Okay. I'm seriously something like a form of doom and dishonored. <laughs> like seriously. Well, I. Uh, huh. Ah, fuck. All right, never mind. Okay, and that's my action for my turn. All right. Uh, the now fish nay. Uh. Rears back with your long sword and slashes it towards you, extending out the fire and uh, bleed dodge. effects. So you, you have to dodge. Uh, anything anything lower than a eighteen, you will take damage. Anything lower than a six, you will die. Nineteen. Oh, you fucker. All right, you you dodge upwards, narrowly avoiding uh, the fire and bleed effect from the knight or from the sword, but you avoid it nonetheless. Just get back here and die. <laughs> then obviously I take some additional four damage from from uh, bleed. He is now at 72 damage. Okay. A different voice speaks in your head. You have 30 seconds to die. I have 30 seconds to die, so if I survive 30 seconds, I won't die. <laughs> uh, you have 30 seconds before you die. Okay, I'm going to cast command and tell him to give me back my longsword. Uh, Actually, no, not command, because he has to do what's saying so, and he's proficient at that. Yeah. Uh, you can cast command on the voice in your head. Tell him to call back in office day. Wait, what? <laughs> Uh, you can you can cast command on the voice on that demon that's talking to you in your head and get him to call back to the office today. Uh, oh yeah, I'll do that. But oh, but you have to get a critical success. You know me in desperate times. Yep. 
What? So you have to roll a D100, uh, 95 or higher, You it is successful. And what do I add? Uh, you add wisdom. Or no, charisma, oh, okay. charisma, not wisdom. Oh, charisma, okay. Uh, can I get a Hoya for a uh, 100? A Hoya? <laughs> uh, you cast command on the voice on the demon voice in your head, telling him to call back the Nilefish Day, and he does as he is told before speaking to you. How have you done this? The Nilefish Day has left the arena and has and uh, will not return for 16 rounds. Okay, I am getting out of there. How? I'll search for a way. Well, you have 16 turns, which is... Uh, wait, that is... 32 actions before the Nafashnator turns. No, I'll go further down and look for a way out that way. Alright, you fly down to the bottom of the cavern, looking around frantically. On your way back up, you spot a little portal underneath the platform. I go through the portal. Without, think without a second thought, you fly through the portal and you find yourself back in the mountain pass, but you are surrounded by tier 10 demons. That's so scary. Have there been a lot of victims? I'll start out. I'm out there. Uh, you sh you try to fly away as fast as you can, but they all start throwing fire spears at you. That is going to be uh, how what I said eight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that will be eight d twenty rolls for save. Oh boy. So a natural twenty for one. So, 20. Un a second unnatural 20. 20. Okay, I did not do this one. Um, so I got 11. 11. Number 4. Number 4. I got 16. 6, number 5. Uh, 18. Number 6. 21. 21. Number 7. A natural 20. 20. And then number 8. Alright, you successfully dodge uh, five of the eight spears thrown at you. The other three pierced your wings and your right leg. You can no longer walk or fly. You take... Uh, you, you take... You take 37 damage. I'm dead. You're, yeah, you're very dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's insta death. That's past negative ten. Yeah. Cause tier ten demons throwing speeders made out of fire at you, like they touch your wings, which aren't actually connected to your body, so they don't deal any damage. But you know, through your right leg, and then the fall. Yeah. So, you got fucked. That's the end of the campaign and your character. You know, there's supposed to be a thing in all the D&D campaigns called plot armor. <laughs> Not mine! Which is a lot of BS. <laughs> it's fun! It's just a lot of BS, that's what it is. I mean, we. I can... I can set up a much longer one, and we can have a lot more fun. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, I mean, the first one was already like three hours of gameplay. Yeah, but... 
I was level 3 facing tier 8, 10 <laughs> monsters. Yeah, I know. That's kind of the point. That's not fair. Okay, given the fact that you, you know, 1v1 a tier 6 orc beast and won. <laughs> no, because that I can fight at a range. Well, yeah, when you're trapped in a cave, that's where you're kind of fucked. And when you can't yeah, fly. That's, that's the only reason I won. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, ending words for the first go. He made some really unfair campaigns. You had fun, fuck you. <laughs> uh, flip horizontal. Or actually. I didn't mean to do that. Uh. There. And if I knew it was going to be this hard, I would have made my character at least level 3 to start out with. Alright. So, we had a good fucking time. Yeah. Uh, before I end this and start working on the next campaign, any words for the video? No. Okay. If you all enjoyed this and are excited to see another campaign on the channel, let us know. We had so much fun playing this. My face hurts from laughing. <laughs> uh, if you guys did enjoy, like button.